The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into CDM solutions is originally from Johannesburg, a place on my travel bucket list, has qualifications in both financial planning and accounting, so super qualified, and has tackled the incredibly difficult and maddening insurance data challenge we all face. Thank, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Catrell wallach welcome. <laughs> So thank you, Peter. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. And it's so good that people like yourself are hearing about what we're doing because we are changing for the first time the life insurance industry and our ability as advisors to be able to provide meaningful advice and meaningful information. It is exciting and it um I'm gonna look forward to diving into it actually because the data available has always been there, right? And it's it's um we'll dive into in a second, you know, what you guys have now managed to do with this data that exists. But before we, you know, get into the nitty gritty, let's get to know you a little first through your use of technology. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I don't know if I'm technologically advanced, Dina, <laughs> which is a bit funny for a, a tech person. But the truth is I don't know anything about computers per se mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand needs. Yeah. I understand solutions and I understand what infrastructure needs to be. So for example, why do I need to do something manually if a computer can do it for me? Right. Why do I need somebody to do something for me if a computer can do it for me? So I would have thought then you would use emojis because it would narrow down from, you know, 12 words into one little image (laughs) that you might interact, say via SMS or something like that, or is that not the case? (laughs) I don't know. Sorry. (laughs) Well, well, then you, you do what 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 emoji is is uh, is yours? Well, well, you know what? You are the first person to ever ask me that uh, on the podcast. Where I don't know what are we thirty two episodes in, and nobody's ever asked one. One of the one of the ones I use the most, which is probably quite telling, is this sort of mischievous purple troublemaker one. It's like a little little um, almost like a. a evil face, you know, that's got like a little troublemaker face um, that all my f- friends know that it's when I'm going to get up to some mischief. Aside from laughing faces, that's a big one for me too. No, I think that um, probably what I do is I smile a lot because most of the responses, most of the, the responses that I'm giving are to people who are really giving a praise or a comment about how their life has been made so much easier. And instead of, in a way, taking credit for it or just or, or, you know, what do you say when somebody says thank you? So I'll, I'll probably smile a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so then as somebody who – so I'm assuming you do have a smartphone, though. Most of us do now, but it's sort of unavoidable, isn't it? Um, if you had to take everything off your smartphone, all of the apps and everything, what three would you keep? It's probably quite easy for me to answer that. 
I would say it's WhatsApp. Right. It's a plain telephone. Yes. And it's SMS. And why can I say that quite simply? Because I actually have an app on my phone, which at six o'clock in the evening, it shuts down everything until 10 o'clock the next morning. Right. So I can't use my phone for anything other than phone, SMS, or WhatsApp. In other words, to be able to communicate to people. Yeah. But I don't surf at night and after hours because that's time for the family. Yeah. And it is, it's a bad habit, that, that doom scrolling thing where we just sort of sit and, and mindlessly absorb, just like even just sitting and mindlessly absorbing a TV show you don't really care about. It's a similar sort of behavior, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, and it's it's not good for any of us. All right, let's dive into CDM Solutions. Yeah. For those that haven't heard of you guys, why don't we start with, let's go high up and just talk about where you guys fit in this sort of advice tech, fintech space. Yeah, so- what category do you sort of generally fall under and, you know, are there other tools you normally get lined up against or are you sort of, you're sort of one on your own? So firstly, we're one on our own. Yep. Uh, CDM actually starts, stands for Client Database Management. And the idea behind CDM is that we have infrastructure that will take data from any source and consolidate it and group it and standardize it so that you can get meaningful information on the data. Right. So as... Previously, I actually created a revenue system mm-hmm. for advisors. So we took the all all the CSV files that advisors would receive in um, revenue statements, mm-hmm. put them all together and consolidate them and then give advisors a, a, an interface within which they could search for revenue per client, per policy, per time period, per provider. Yep. And that was deployed for about 500 advisors. Mm-hmm. And that was brilliant. That was that was changing for advisors because if an advisor bought a business, they'd be able to track the revenue from that business. If they had a referrer, they'd be able to track the referrer's revenue yeah. and actually share that information with a login for the referrer. So that was good. When we created that, once we created that, we then went on to, I went on to then creating, trying to create CDM. And it blew my mind that uh, as an advisor myself at that stage for 12 years, why do I have to log into several different insurance companies to get information? <laughs> Why is there not one source of truth for all insurance? Yeah. And obviously the biggest providers in the market are X Plan and Advisor Logic. Mm-hmm. And every time I had a conversation with them, their answers were along the lines of, look, insurance is not our main uh, thing. Most of it is around investments. Right. And therefore, it just wasn't a priority for them. And even whatever they did was not 100% reliable. And even what was reliable wasn't 100% of my clients. Right. So it wasn't actually a solution that could be depended on. Yeah, okay. So then I started searching about eight years ago for different developers, different providers around the world. Can somebody do this? Because I just need it. Yeah. And you know, scouring the internet every three months, couldn't find anyone and started looking for local developers, international developers, somebody, somebody, somebody. Went through the process of getting some sort of prototype done, Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever we tested it, it fell apart, and whenever it fell apart, the developers couldn't do it, we couldn't do to it what we needed to be done. Right. And that was until February last year when I got a new set of developers on board. February last year, we redesigned, recreated the system, and we took on some beta testers, and every time a beta and advisor asked, said, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong, this needs to happen, can we get this, can we get that? The developers were amazing. They just did it and everything just worked. And then we went commercial in August. I think we're sitting now at about 100 practices with 150 to 200 advisors around the country um, with really large practice of practices with three or 4,000 clients and inquiries coming in from practices that have got 20, 30,000 clients and dealer groups coming on board to say, this is a solution that every advisor needs. And because we're the only ones doing it, everybody needs it. Yeah. So to talk about, so let's talk about the data because clearly, like you said, you started in revenue and, and I don't know how many of the listeners know this, but the revenue data we get, it contains a lot of information, doesn't it? I mean, there's in those files, there's all sorts of stuff that comes with that and, and the providers have lots of information they can provide. So I'm, I'm betting that like you were just describing, the biggest challenge was at the how do we pull it together so it's both A, consistent and B, useful yes. as opposed to getting the data at all because it sort of was always there. You know, it was. it's just there was so much of it from so many different places that kept on changing their format, all that sort of stuff. Is Was that one of the challenges? The challenges were, yeah, 
the advisors, the so insurers change in their format. Yeah. The insurers not provided consistent information. I think maybe the, the, the major part of it was actually finding technology or infrastructure that we could use that could mix and match. Right. Which I thought would be very easy, but, you know, it took seven years to realize that it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's one, this is one of those categories of of, um, <laughs> of tech that seems blindingly obvious that we should have always had it. It is in, firmly in that category. You know, it's, but it's just all the information that's there individually brought into one place. You know, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's a big ask, but it clearly has been because you're there, you know, pushing at the forefront of it, still only now able to get there. You know, yes. it sort of seems a bit mystifying, doesn't it? Like it's, this is crazy. All we're asking for, and it, we're not talking about um, complexity of analysis or complex, you know, any of this or magic of AI and you know, all these things that everybody talks about now. It's literally taking some data and making it, you know, bringing it together and making it accessible in a really useful way. Right. So that's that's how we started. Um, but then as soon as we did reach that milestone of um, getting all the data from all the providers, well, albeit not all the providers were on board initially. So yep. a lot of the providers actually don't have technology that we can just log in and get it ourselves. So right. a lot of the time we actually use, like what um, Xplan does with their data feeds, the advisor puts in their username and password and we get their data from the portal. Yep. And um, other providers send us the data directly. Other providers now will send it to the advisor and the advisor sends it on to us. So the data is collected in a variety of ways. Yep. But and not everyone was there initially. But what's actually happening is that, for example, if I can name drop, that you know, all, all of the providers have been very good. Where you would have a, a, a MetLife had a large an advisor with a lot of MetLife policies, and that advisor then asked MetLife, "Look, we're consolidating all our insurance information into CDM, and we can't get MetLife, and that's a problem." So then MetLife reached out to us. Yeah. And we worked out with MetLife how to get the data, likewise with Intendity, likewise with NEOS. Yeah. So the insurers are actually coming to us now, and as well as, uh, you know, the evidence of none of the CRMs are doing what we're doing. We actually had a meeting with one of the two largest providers a few weeks ago where they've got advisors coming to them and saying, you guys are not doing insurance feeds well. We're using CDM for our insurance feeds, our insurance data. Can we import from CDM into the CRM and the CRM then reached out to us to say, how can they do it? And we've had a number of inquiries from large and large up and coming CRMs who have got clients who are using CDM who are asking the CRM provider, how can they get the CRM, the CDM data into their CRM? So Salesforce, Finfix, yep. Clive, Teleflow is on board now. Perfect. So we, uh, my my philosophy have been look. It's not about me having some sort of monopoly or some sort of control. Whatever information in CDM that belongs to an advisor belongs to that advisor, and the advisors are asking us, can we export that in a particular format for a particular provider, a particular C particular CRM? And that's not a problem. Whether that, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So let's go to the and and we'll get to um we'll get to sort of integrations and things like that in a bit but in terms of the first level of of efficiency or simplicity or just you know staying sane <laughs> um anybody listening who has any even a small number of insurance clients will almost certainly have experienced in the last I guess a year or so horrible wait times to call a provider when you're just trying to ask something simple or even logging on to an online platform and it just not having what you need and therefore you've got a call. you know, I mean, that's quite a common <laughs> two-step process. Actually, one of the things that um, propelled us to probably the second stage in development was that issue where I saw an advisor who had about 2,000 clients. He had somebody who would come into his office for about 20 hours a week to try and speak to the insurance companies to try and get the renewal upcoming renewal data and then populate renewal notices to send out to clients. Yeah. So once CDM had all that information, we have the inception date of the policy. We have the premium. We have who the owner of the policy is. Oftentimes, we have loadings and exclusion. We have all, we have the address. We have the client's phone number. We have the client's email address. We have all that information. So now all that needs to happen is uh, initially the advisor would just download the report into Excel about all policies coming up for renewal next month. 
And that would save them having to speak to all the different insurance companies on a regular basis. Yeah. And the information would just flow through again, saving heaps of time. Absolutely. And even, it's interesting, you know, clients can have quite simple queries, or oh, can you just confirm this feature that I've got or, or wait, you know, what is the current premium? I want to check that what's coming out of my bank account. And so to have a single place um, where the, you know, the team can first go to go, all right, let me just check quickly. And it's not that I'm going to have to come back to you. I've got to make a phone call. I've got to. So Peter, so, you know, case scenarios is, and a client calls the advisor with that exact question, hi, you know, how much am I insured for? Yeah. And when the client calls up, that's when they want to talk about it. Yeah. So if the advisor says, you know, um, I'll call you back in 10 minutes, it's too late. Yeah. But so we're having advisors now coming back with feedback along the lines that because I had the answer for the client on the spot, I was able to engage in a new business and I was yeah. able to solve the client's problems and, you know, everybody was happy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even if it's, you know, the support team taking the call, then when you think about it, otherwise a client calls in, great, take message, make query to either website or, or provider, come back, try and call the client. It takes two to three goes because you've got to catch them. Like the whole yeah. process <laughs> is about five or six steps yeah. when, as you're saying, if that can all just be done initially while you're on the phone with them. Right. And then, of course, if it needs to be escalated from a support person to the advisor, you know, you can train your team to do that well. But, but you know, taking out all of that, you know, trying to get back to them, leaving messages, like all that insanity, it's it's just unnecessary. And it's not doing the best work for them. You know, it's it's actually getting all of the team caught up in, all, like you were describing before, you know, with renewals, it's getting caught up in a whole lot of, you know, manual sort of data and, and difficulty instead of actually engaging with the public. Right. And it's not utilizing the staff. Yeah. And a lot of advisors have, you know, just to have somebody coming in to print off renewal notices or email renewal notices, there's right. no value add. You know, it's a minimum that needs to be done for the practice. Yeah. What about redeploying that person to actually doing quotes yes. or, or you know, other value add? And particularly when it's across a large, you know, a, a huge chunk of clients that this applies to and you're having to manually do things, then when you do have insurers that have some either the, you know, staffing issues or whatever goes on and your 10 minute call turns into a 40 minute wait time, then you know, the whole, your whole team just gets sucked up into this stuff. It's just disastrous. Um, and I've seen that in our practice where I started to look and go, am I going to need to get more admin people just because they're sitting on the phone so long? Like, you know, this is, this is not where we should be, as you say, where we should be applying our resources. That's just, if I'm going to get new people, wouldn't it be great if it was actually adding value? <laughs> Absolutely. As opposed to, you know, almost uh, being uh, subcontractors for, for the providers, really, because we have to, you know, um, do some of their work. So, okay, so we've got getting client, you know, getting some details on what they might be covered for, maybe what their current premium is. That makes some, that makes sense. I'm aware there's like a sort of a click of a button policy summary. If somebody wants just to get that snapshot um, of what they currently have, is that available across a few policies? So if they've got, you know, a couple of different um, products. Yeah, so what we even provide is we provide a snapshot for client based on last name and date of birth. Yep. So if they have the same last name and date of birth across multiple providers, our summary will include all that information. Great. Great. Okay. And then and then we also now lately, I'm not jumping the gun, but pretty exciting, we now integrate with one of the research houses. So if the client's on the phone, you go, hey, Catriel, how much am I paying for my life insurance? So I pull up CDM and it says you've got policies across TAL, AIA and Zurich and you've got a million dollars with each. I push a button and it opens up the research and it says for $3 million of insurance, this is what it will cost with the other providers. Right. So we've had advisors that are, that are you know, going through that whole process in five minutes with a client on the phone from the time the client calls is sort of all the backwards and forwards. Yep. Yep, exactly. Because, I mean, the real value, as we all know, with insurance is going to end up being about you know, yes, we need to do those comparisons and it's always what they want to hear about, oh, saving money, but it's it's about, you know, what features have they got, what, you know, terms can change, how much cover, all those sort of things. And so you've, you know, if you can make everything else faster, then it lets you have the real yeah, conversation. That's why I focus on the meaningful stuff. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> bread and butter, this is just like you expect this from a CRM, yes. but none of the CRM is provided. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I was sort of, I was contemplating actually of what it's been like to date for us, particularly with insurance, where there are, you know, on the on the wealth side, there are, an, you know, well, they're not necessarily perfect, but there are sort of data fees and way to bring that together. But with insurance, it's a bit like if, you know, oh, look, I want to watch a movie, you'd have to know who the lead actor is, and then you'd log into just the streaming serv- service for George Clooney's movies, right? <laughs> and then, you know, if you want to watch a different movie, well, you've got to go to that other streaming service, because that's just for, you know, somebody else's movies. Like, it's this ridiculous, there's no reason it can't all be in one place. That's right. You know, and so, all right. So, the other element that you mentioned, policy renewals as well, that can be something that's um, you can get really proactive with, which depending on how big and or how big a proportion insurance is in a practice, they may or may not be getting on the front foot of that. So that's a great opportunity to sort of reach out ahead of time. Well, most advisors that we've spoken to, either they're too small to have resources to be able to employ renewal notices being sent out to clients. Yep. Well, they're very large and they just have a human doing it. Yeah. It costs a lot of money. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think I'll just remember your question was what else? Oh well, actually, um, so there was policy renewals, but I re- but I also remember taking a quick look. There was also, you know, sort of overdue premiums all being in one place rather than us getting those notices from all the different providers. Was like, what happened was um, MLC stopped sending out this payment notices to advisors, and the first time the advisor would be made aware of a missed premium would be when they received a a lapse notice. Wow, and Obviously, advisors were very disappointed, Mm. and the feedback from the MLC was, look, it's available on the portal, so if you an advise as an advisor, just log in every Monday or whatever, you'll be able to see all the information. So whilst that is a satisfactory answer, meaning, you know, the information is available, now we have to now allocate another resource to just log into a website to see what's overdue. So we spoke to MLC, I know where they they worked with us. And we now had in our portal an overdue module. Mm-hmm. So if a client does miss a premium, it's on the report. But we went one step further. Um, we actually, through CDM, emailed the client from the advisor's office saying, hello, client, do you know that you missed your premium? Right. So it's automating that process of missed premiums as well. Yeah, because there is, we've all had clients, like there's just some clients that are managing their cash flow t- to such an extent that invariably that's going to happen. You know, like it's, they haven't moved the money from where to where and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced that and, and following those up is maddening because right. it's, you know, it's not somebody accidentally once off, which of course, you know, of course you want to follow it up. But the person that's just doing this repeatedly, it's like, come on, is there not a way to automate that? So, okay. So the system, um, clearly absorbs in data, collates it, makes it easily accessible and reportable. But what you've added there is some automation triggered by certain situations against a client um, and overdue premiums being one of them. Overdue and renewals. And also, um, I know we have provisional lapses as well. I'm not sure where we're up to with the actual emails of that. But the interesting thing about um, the way CDM is is working is that every day, Peter, I'm getting updates about new features that are being added. Yep. So I would not be surprised if by the time, you know, four weeks from now, it'll be a different solution. Yep. You know, so for example, one of the things we're working on is currently we have, I can tell you how many providers I'm using in my business, how many clients I have with each provider, what is the enforced premium, what is the split of that premium across life insurance, TPT, troll, income protection, et cetera. Yep. The premium and the benefits of cost those different categories. But what I, what we've been working on now is actually to get a revenue expectation across each policy. Okay. So for example, if I have policy one, two, three, four, five, six with NEOS and it's paying a recurring revenue of ten percent and I have uh one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten policy with with uh, integrity I was paying twenty two percent. Yeah. I now have the ability within the system to generate an actual value or recurring value. Right. Of income for the business. And then we will then incorporate comparing that to actual income received. Yep. And it isn't, it's an interesting thing with, um, I mean, it's changed in wealth with the way we renew fees and all that sort of thing. Lots of people have, you know, it's, it's quite a proactive and, and, really easily accessible level of fee. Like it's, there's just far less of that tail for most people, you know? I mean, that still exists to a certain extent, but I'm betting that as the, the, the information you guys can collect 
gets better and better, then, you know, you can start to identify those um, policies or clients where, you know, the amount getting paid to the advisor is so small that it's going to start to be just non-viable for that particular client. Right. Or they at least have the information to make that decision. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So, the other thing I noticed was then for something like the policy summary, there's some branding or, or design that can get applied to that. So it's something that can be for, you know, look and feel of your practice. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's amazing. In one of the previous iterations, the email that would go out for a renewal was hard coded. So an advisor would have to say, this is the email that we, this is the way we want it to look. Yeah. Every advisor would have to change it. So in an upgrade a while ago, you now have the ability to put in your own text, your own logos, your own headers, footers on all the emails that go out of the business, out of your business. Fantastic. And then what we did is the policy schedules. We had a lot of advi- requests from advisors to include the policy schedule in the email that goes out from the practice with the renewal notice. Yep. So we did that. And then we had advisors saying, look, you know, our colors are a little bit different. Our logo is a little bit different. So we did that. We created the first teaching mat- to make to fix that for the advisor and now we've got you know large practices want very specific information specific layouts etc and we're actually just matching it i don't know how the guys are doing it yep but they are they're giving the advisors exactly what they want fantastic yeah and so are you seeing and so let's talk about the you know for a practice that this works really well for are they going as far as for example maybe the template emails they want um, you know, have the uh, renewal information, perhaps have, like you say, the policy schedule attached, but also, hey, click on this link if you want to have an appointment with an advisor. Like, are they sort of taking it that far so the client can yeah, then- so Every meeting that I have with a new advisor, I tell them the success that advisors are having with uh, Calendly. Yep. So with Calendly, simply you put that into your renew- renewal email, your happy birthday email, your uh, missed payment email, whatever it is. Yep. And advisors are just getting calls and, and appointments booked, you know, fantastic. without having to do anything. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so it really, it sounds like the um, the first temptation I can I can see some people would see this almost as a um, a data dis- like a distant tool that you might refer to, whereas it sounds like to really take advantage of it, it's start it's starting to you know really fold it into your processes and how you're going to do your ongoing service. Absolutely, and yeah. I think um, look, it's it's just about anyone who realizes that technology can save a lot of time and effort. Yeah, fortunately, nobody's got it right. So as long as nobody's got it right, it hasn't been anything that advisors can rely on. Yes. As, um, you know, Elixir from um, from Perth and with all their clients, you know, they, 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 they've they realized, you know, this is the best thing for anyone who has any sort of risk business. Yeah. Because even if the risk business is tiny, the cost for using the solution is so tiny. And even if the business is huge, it's still a tiny cost. And yep. advisors are making back their investments, you know, within a month or two. Uh, over a whole year's cost. So, yeah, absolutely. I don't believe that there's anyone who knows what they're doing that would not benefit from CDM. And you even know what? I will have taken further to say anyone who doesn't know what they're doing will benefit because if you don't know what you're doing, CDM will just run your business for you. Yeah. I do know what you're doing. Well, you'll just use CDM to make much more efficiencies and just get back to us. And we had advisors come back and say, we want a group, an, an, age, great, an age group report. We right. a state-based report of where our clients are and how old our clients are, et cetera. So whatever we're getting asked for with delivering, and so whenever you can use what you think you could use to make your life better, just yeah. ask. And I think that's a really important point, I think, with um, lots of technology solutions. And, you know, yours is a really good example where – the early users and probably the ongoing users are going to absolutely define where the development goes, yeah. right? Because they're bothering to give feedback. And I think, you know, from the bad old days of huge providers that we struggled to even reach a person <laughs> to talk to, I think that world has changed so significantly. I think it's it's on us to actually give the feedback. I really think it's our responsibility to go, you know what? It'd be great if... You know, just because now it may not, it, providers have their development plans and they, and you know, they, they can't do everything all at once, but they absolutely can't do something they don't know about. Um, yeah. And, you know, most, I mean, it's a bit different to yourself who's actually operating in the space, but, but most tech providers, you know, aren't running a live practice right now. So they're not going to actually see the living, breathing challenges or needs. 
Right. And I, I think, you know, that's probably the um, our point of difference is that it is actually very hard to do. But mm. because we understand what it is that's needed, we, we've been able to put it together. Yeah. And it is an important, it's a different lens, isn't it? Like it's a unique single lens. And I would put um, what you guys here have, have pulled together here into a similar category to product recs. I don't know whether you've ever looked at them, but but Nick there has done a similar thing where he deeply understands this specific lens of data. You know, like it's, okay, this is what we need out of this and therefore I'm going to create something that solves right. that problem. And what it does do is it means you very quickly get wins because somebody understands it deeply enough. Yes. Um, you, so so I can I can absolutely believe that practices can just go, wow. And I think the other thing I would say is if you have, like you say, really any, um, you know, small number but any decent number of insurance clients and you don't have something like this, um, and think, you know what, but it's all it's all handled. I don't think this is a big issue for my practice. Then um, I would argue it's probably time to have some really good um, brainstorming conversations with your support team because the one st- single strength I see in every support team member is their ability to plow through crazy tasks that are repetitive and difficult and just get it done. Right. And what that means is we don't hear that it's hard because they just do it. <laughs> Right, um, and if you're not aware, then you don't realise that, like you say, that it's difficult to either just log on and get the details, or they've got to wait on the call, right. or they've got to, you know, they don't because they're just good. They just get it done. It's it feels easy to me as the advisor. I don't have to do that, you know. <laughs> right. So I would argue almost all of us will be experiencing this in our practices somewhere. It just may not be for us. Um, and so it's important that we sort of, you know, understand that a little better and ask the questions because I guarantee you anybody that's having to deal with insurance information or insurers will be. Uh, one of the the lead questions that I ask every time I'm meeting with a potential new advisor, I just ask them, how many clients do you have in your practice? Yeah. And the closest, I'm, so let's say I've had 100 meetings, the best answer I got was, well, we've just done our whole annual review for the entire year and we've pulled all the information from all the different providers. And as of a month ago, I considered it was X, Y, Z. Yeah. But nobody has been able to tell me how much, uh, how many clients they have in their practice. So there's one answer that CDM provides. Yeah. The other pro- answer that CDM provides is I would ask you, Peter, like if I called mm. you up and I said, Peter, how much life insurance do I have? What would you do? Yeah, did, that'd be a, it'd almost be an averaging exercise. For the practice. Is that what you mean? Like how much cover do we have across our clients no, for cover? No, I'm saying if I'm a client of yours. Oh, right. And I, say, right. And, and I want an answer. Yeah. Then I'd for almost all the insurers, I'd go, look, I'll get back to you. Right. <laughs> Unless, oh, and, but that's not okay. No, it's not okay. And even if, I mean, we've got a great CRM, so my only hope would be the team might have made a note recently. But even then, it's only up to date to the most recent note somebody's made. Right, so we have um, like a date stamp on every record. Yep. So when I log in and you say, well, if you would log in, I say, Peter, how much is shift I have? You log into CDM and you say, okay, yeah, I found your document, your, your records here, and I can tell this was updated yesterday because mm-hmm. a lot of the policies we update three times a week. So you, you would be able to say, I can see as of yesterday it was, you know, a million dollars. Yeah. So again, advisors can't do that. No, because even e- either they don't have access to the information, so they'll at best they'll say, "Look, I'll log into the portal. Hopefully, I'll get the right portal and I'll get the right information." <laughs> yeah, or uh, they have offshore or local support staff staff updating CRMs. Most of them don't update it regularly. Yeah, uh, but if the client actually wants to know, even with those advisors that have got human resources updating the information, it's not necessarily correct. No. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So here's a question for you, and I'm putting you on the spot here, so I apologize in advance. Um, let's imagine somebody has, because, you know, advisor codes and what policies are under what advisor codes, all those sort of things can be variable depending on how practices have developed over time and merged and all those sort of things. <clears throat> Do you have an ability once once the data's in, right? So we've got policies and therefore clients into CDM, do you have an ability in the system to then have us assign them to a particular advisor rather than the one that, you know, the code that they might be under? Well, we had an, a, um, a meeting. That, so we went, we've just done the Risk in Focus Expo that went around the country. Yep. So we were in, meet, in Sydney. We had a meeting with an advisor who 
asked that exact question. They have about three or 4,000 clients, mm-hmm. multiple advisors, and they said, can they do just that? They want to allocate so that emails go out from the particular advisor, right. come into that particular advisor. And I saw the email with that I think on Friday saying oh, that's all done. Fantastic. Yeah. Because it does let you then, um, for example, once you've done that, then the templated email can have their unique calendar link or, you know, like all those things become, yeah, more possible at that point. So, so we, we have different models. We have, for example, um, theater group model where they can access all clients. Yep. Then we have um, business model where business can access all clients. Then we have advisor level, which is advisor can access either only their own clients or all the clients in the business. Right. So a lot of different options with when it comes to setting it up. Yeah, okay. Run advisor, see what clients. Fantastic. So let's just, and you mentioned early, earlier integration or, you know, some, in, you mentioned IntelliFlow, for example. Yeah. How, you know, how are they looking to utilize that connection? How's, how, what's the, um, what are they hoping for? What are those um, integrations hoping to do? Well, at the moment, there is not one CRM in the country that has all insurance information. Yep. I never wanted to create a CRM because I didn't want to create something that other people have done. I only ever wanted to provide a service. So I never anticipated creating a CRM. I still don't anticipate creating a CRM. Yep. But from the CRM providers who are now contacting us, they understand that they need to be able to provide insurance data. So we're now getting calls from all of them saying, how can they get our data? Right. And our okay. answer is, it's there. You know, just find a client who's gone to data. Yep. And that client will be able to access, uh, if they will be told how do they get the data into their particular CRM, they'll come back to us and they'll say, we need it in this particular format with these particular fields, whether it's an XLS file, a CSV, or it's some sort of file transfer. Yep. And we'll do it. So, you know, whichever CRM is flexible enough to take in data, we will give it to them. Fantastic. So it sounds like, though, from a provi- pro- sorry, from an advisor's perspective, you know, step one start using CDM so that then you can see the benefits. Um, and then step two, nag your CRM advice doc prov- you know, <laughs> solution and say, I need you to talk to CDM so that yeah. then we can take – because I think often when I see people um, embark on these things, they sort of go at, at it from the other angle um, and it's all about, well, we need to get the integration first. And I'm a bit of a believer that, hey, there's efficiencies that exist from the tool just on its yeah. own. Yeah. Let's just bed those down and get a really good understanding of what it does and what it's capable of and then worry about integrating. Yeah, um, right. So two two things I'll add on to that. The first thing is that the CDM will do whatever you want. So you just need to imagine, use your imagination. If I have all my insurance data in one place, what can I do with it? Yeah. But that's what we're doing. Secondly, there are larger CRMs too, which I've mentioned already, which don't allow an email to be sent out on an individual basis, say, 30 days before renewal. Right. So not necessarily will every CRM be better than yep. CDM as a standalone because CDM as a standalone will save a lot of time when it comes to overdue not, 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 not the thing emailed, which the CRMs may or may not be able to do. The yep. re- re- so that was overdue. But the renewals, they may or may not be able to do, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's um... – you know, it's important to see, I think people can get really caught up with that single, you know, oh, it would be better if it was just all in one place. And and I get why that seems good. But to be honest, if something's doing a job really well, <laughs> let's just enjoy that. You know, yeah, let's right. just go, let's yay. Have just have it open in another window. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's just like, this is such a big win. Um, and I do think I'm a big fan of let's go for the mammoth win that can be a huge, and I can see that with a tool like this, like we can really like just take that insanity out of our poor team's hands of this stuff they've got to do and make it really accessible and, qu- and you know, quickly accessible. Yeah. And then, you know, do the big win first and then down the track, hey, sure, you know, integration's great, but I think let's, you know, focus on that big rock first. Um you know, and get that sorted. So then, you know, is there anything that you've seen that um, people are doing really clever or surprising things with the tool yet? I mean, I know it's early days really, but, you know, are there any users really surprised you with what they've managed to pull off? I think, Peter, the answer is that every day we get advisors asking us, can we do this, can we do that? And they have brilliant ideas yeah. and then we deploy them to everyone. Yeah. My biggest challenge, and I can't, I can't, I haven't figured it out yet, is because we're releasing new features every day, how do we communicate that? 
Right. And how does somebody who goes to our website actually know what we're doing? Because it's changing all the time. Yeah. Uh, yes, lots of new things coming out. Uh, so I gave last week, I think it was either last week or the week before, advisors wanted to customize the um, policy schedule that goes out or even go back, go back a step. Firstly, the policy schedule was not attached to the, to the email that went out to a client for a renewal. Yep. Then we had advisors, can we now please attach a policy schedule? Fine, so we did that. Then the next one last week or week before was, we want to now password protect that PDF. Right. So we did that. So yep. lots of different um, features. I think also, you know, added in an X plan client ID field, which you can manually. Okay. Edit. Um, and then that applies not only to x but to any CRM. Yep. So that's the sort of unique ID that connects and, it. And depending on the particular advisor practice, how technology is to they are, will will dictate, you know, what more they can do with the data that they're getting from us. Yep. Our data is often more correct than what the advisors have in their CRMs because it's coming from directly from the insurer. Yeah, absolutely. And advisors and web advisors, so clients will tell the insurer if they need to change their address or email or phone number, but not necessarily tell the advisor. Absolutely. And that's something that can come up. You know, it's it's natural that they'll they'll get something in the post and go, oh, need to update that. Like that's the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and how about down, I mean, I certainly there's a consistent message with um, the development that you're responding to what your users are asking for. Is there anything specifically on the development path that's maybe a bigger, chunkier thing that you guys are working towards? I would say the best thing that we're going to do, hopefully in the near future, here it's first down mentioned about the revenue uh, management, not management, but uh, reporting. Collation. Actual. Yep. But the most exciting thing I think will be um, we're now speaking to insurance companies themselves. Let's say we have a quarter of a million in, um, or a million insurance policies within CDM. Why can't NEOS, for example, uh, provide us or help us provide a solution where they go through and quote every one of those million policies? So we have uh, occupations. Often we have dates of birth. We have sums insured. Yeah. We have current premiums. So why not? Why not? Why does it have to be a manual process one at a time where we get a quote for that particular policy when another provider would charge? Why not have it provided for on a weekly basis where advisors get a report saying, these are your top 20 clients that are paying 20 or 30 percent more than what another provider would charge? Right. And that's not a solution and that's not my answer, but it's a good place to walk into the office on a Monday morning. Yes, absolutely. And and I can see, I mean, what you're essentially saying is it could sort of live, it's a living, breathing update at any point. Yeah. Um, and even if even if it wasn't, you know, triggered as a, a big report, even if it was just the next time you logged in, you'd look to the right and see the comparison and go, oh, hold on. <laughs> this is We've now hit that point that it makes sense to bring this up. The client's reached out anyway. Like all of those sort of things are – are incredibly um, powerful when they're at your fingertips, you know, and that's the difference. If if it's much harder than trigger that yourself, um, you know, that is just a human resource doing it at the lab. Whereas it should be a, it should be um, electronicized. Yeah, automatic. absolutely. Automatic. Automatic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And once again, just like we said before, let's focus on the human element of it and have the data at our fingertips. That's exciting. So yeah. is there anything else? I'm sure there is, but is there anything else we've missed, any core elements of the system that we haven't covered? No, I don't think so. I mean, no? probably in the time that we've spoken, the developers have come up with new features. <laughs> <laughs> but for all intensive purposes, if you have an insurance business and you're not using CDM, you're going to get left behind. Well, and probably, I mean, you know, at the very least, I'm a big fan of finding, you know, some immediate bandwidth wins for people um, and for their teams. And it sounds like if you've got insurance clients and this is one that could be a, an immediate, you can give your team back some bandwidth, you know, you can, you know, redeploy them for other things. And, and it's a consistent me- message coming from advice practices is they either need more people or they need their current people to have more bandwidth. So, you know, it absolutely falls into that category. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about CDM Solutions, then the website link is in the episode show notes, along with Catriel's LinkedIn details. So I'm sure you'd be happy if you reached out to him, he'll then point you in the right direction of who can help and who can take you on that journey. Look, thank you so much for joining us, Catriel, and for tackling such a huge task (laughs) that we will all benefit from um, you sort of fighting through the data war um, and, you know, ultimately 
making insurance policyholders' lives easier, which is something that I think, you know, it's not often we get to say that. Um, so I think, you know, if, if we can respond in a faster way to our clients for their queries, then that's only going to put a smile on their face. So thank you for doing that hard work for all of us. Thank you. And, and one last thing that I did, did, as you mentioned that, I think that it wouldn't be too far off to be able to say advisors give their clients access via user and password to be able to access their own policy information. Like, why does the client need to call the advisor? Why can't the client just log in and get the information themselves? Fantastic. Oh, well, I'm going to hold you to that now. You've you've <laughs> put that in the public forum, Katrina. We're, we're going to – the uh, ensemble community will be, um, will be on your case. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Thank you so much. Okie dokie. So – Anybody out there, are you using CDM solutions? Um, have you been checking it out? Uh, I, you know, I do think that this is <laughs> information about insurance policies has always been tough and we are forced to go in and out of different online locations. And of course, when insurers take each other over or there's a book they take over, I mean, all of that just gets disastrously complicated. Uh, so to me, I mean, as an example, in our practice, we've got one page on our in- internal intranet that's all about who's taken over who and who's who in the hood. Like it's, <laughs> and it's just scrolls worthy. So if a tool can collate a whole lot of information together where you become a little more indifferent to that in that this is the place you go first to find information, then I think that's really powerful. So I think, you know, the ensemble community would love to hear if you have been um, part of the early users for CDM. This is an early stage app, you know, like uh, Catriel mentioned, it's, you know, sort of last year was when they first really came to market. But, um, you know, there's absolutely an opportunity for the right practice at the right time to use this tool. In terms of my thoughts, I think this firmly falls into the category of some people will want to wait, for example, until it does completely integrate. And we know the data's you know, for all of the insurers and we know like all those sort of things. And, you know, I'd really get you to think carefully about doing waiting like that. There is no tool or technique or process we will ever use that will be 100% perfect. Uh, The trick is when you can get 95% of great efficiency and it's only on these side ones that we may have to manually do it, or we may have to ring that much smaller insurer that we hardly ever use, you know, that sort of thing, then, you know, when you do, it still gets incredible value. So I guess I just want to make sure that whether it's for something like insurance or it's something else in your world, that you're not waiting until it does it for all things, for all clients in all situations. Uh, Those things, in my opinion, never really exist. Uh, So there's always going to be some exceptions for clients. There's always going to be clients that are phone or post only. They just are never going to be on um, email or web or whatever. You know, I mean, there's always going to be some exceptions. Just get the value out of the core and you know attack it and manage to really extract some value for it from it. So um, that would be my biggest tip here. Is this absolutely? I mean, I, I guarantee you, um, you know, Catrill and the team from CDM are you know, going to have certain small insurers or new insurers or one gets taken over by another, there's going to be gaps. You know, it's it's just invariable for any type of data. And we've all seen that for data feeds for wealth too, right? But I think there's, you know, being able to go to a place to get a quick policy schedule, to get some immediate information, to know, you know, really quickly when the policy will renew, those things can save you whole people in your team. I, I can't understate understate this like just, or overstate it, sorry. Um, this can transform the capacity in your business. Um, just like we in our practice, we experienced that with product recs. It really unlocked some capacity. This falls into a similar category as many of the providers that we talk about or apps we talk about um, on the podcast do. Uh, so, like Catriel said, if you've got insurance policies, um, at least take a look um, and give it a trial and just see what information you might be able to get your hands on and therefore save some of your team's t- time, maybe even hold off hiring somebody. Like this can really make a bottom line difference, these sort of tools that are about getting data quickly 
without having to search for it. Um, in a lot of studies um, done on productivity of office workers, then search and gather of information is a significant task that can take up huge amounts of time. And often the information is info they already have, they just can't get their hands on it. So this falls firmly into that category. So if you can tick that off and, make, and streamline that for your team, it, it'll be a massive win. Now, you know what time it is, folks. We're down to our curiosity corner part of the podcast where we make sure you're always developing that avid curiosity to make, you know, to work you towards becoming a true bionic advisor. And this week's app that came across my computer, I guess, my inbox, my computer, um, or my feed, actually, I think it came across my feed was how I found it, is an app called My Mind. Now, you can find it at mymind.com, M-Y-M-I-N-D.com. And their tagline is, remember everything, organize nothing. Now, this is really interesting to me. So anybody that's tried to get organized, love, loves having lots of ideas, you know, ends up writing it down on post-its or in a book and then changing it to another notebook and then has notes on Google and then has, right? If you've tried all sorts of ways to collect your thoughts, and there's been some other apps I've mentioned previously in Curiosity Corner that are trying to do similar things, generally the way they approach it is to really organize it as a way to collect your thoughts, right? These guys are going quite the other end. So the tool works like your real mind, right? So this is just sort of one stream of consciousness, right? So you just have a thought, you capture it. And then to find something, you search for it. But the tool will have already used artificial intelligence to note the color of the tool, the object of the item, the object, the word you used, all sorts of things like magic that will mean when you search for it, you're more likely to find it. So your new mind, (laughs) being my mind, sort of analyzes images, it analyzes articles and even websites you might collate into it, tagging them for you automatically so you can easily find them later. You know, this could be your notes, your bookmarks, uh, inspiration, you know, quotes you come across, articles, images. Um, they can all be in one single private place and it's just sort of enhanced with artificial intelligence in terms of the way that it it notes what it is such that you can find it. Um, there's no folders. There's no categories. You don't have to spend a lot of time organizing it, which is what I feel like I spend a lot of time with these sorts of tools. Um, It's actually a browser extension or a mobile app, and you can just save the image or the text highlight or a website with a single click, right? So that's all you need to do. You just save it, right? And then the tool categorizes and analyzes it for you so you can easily find it later. Now, uh, their description is that my mind is for really busy people right, who maybe move too fast to be just bothered with folders and labels and systems, you know, the thinkers, the doers, and this can just be an extension of their mind. Um, So as somebody who has 427 things that occur to them on a regular basis about all sorts of wonderful things they could do or see or, or are curious about, you know, then this is particularly appealing. So I'd really encourage you to check it out. Uh, That's mymind.com. It's early stage uh, and they're looking for people to play with it. So if, you know, your mind is a little all over its all over the place like mine is, then it might appeal to you. Welp, that's all I've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix order magically sent to you each Friday. And if you or your dealer group or collective uh, would like a speaker at your next event to perhaps brief your audience on how they too can become bionic advisors, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, at LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 